welcome back to Friend Crush. I'm Amber Akilla and this is my podcast, I guess, where I just talk about stuff and I'm experimenting with video and audio at the moment. So there's going to be an audio link for podcast platforms and then YouTube for video so you can feel like I'm chatting with you. But today's episode, I wanted to talk about my personal journey with feminism and identity and how it's sort of like shaped the person I've become, who I'm becoming, and really emphasize that it's a journey that continues to evolve. And I think sometimes now um, there's this sort of like implicit expectation for people to feel like they've arrived or that other people have arrived and they haven't arrived. So there's like something inherently wrong with them because they haven't like peaked in this moment. But as I like to say, never assume you've peaked. And the only thing that you know is that you know nothing. So I think for me, it's definitely been ongoing process of unlearning and learning and just getting to a place where I can accept that it's not always about like what's right and wrong, but what is right for me and being able to accept that everything is constantly changing and evolving and I should embrace that instead of getting too complacent or feeling like I'm stagnant for whatever reason. I'm just going to talk about my journey in very like general terms to start with. And if there's anything that people want to hear more about, then we can always go in that direction. So I'm going to try and discuss this through what I call Amber Achilles four A's of realizing things. Um, So the first A is awareness and acknowledgement. The second A is anger. The third A is acceptance. And the fourth A is action. So these are like four stages that I kind of oscillate in between when it comes to a particular issue in my life and how I process like different ideas and concepts. So in regards to my personal journey with feminism, I think I was introduced to feminism as a concept around the age of like 14 ish. I would say that up until that point, I really never questioned my place in society as a girl becoming a woman. I grew up with a single working mother. I went to an all girls school. So I was surrounded by a lot of femininity when I was younger. And I saw girls excelling in academics, in sport, in music. It was just never a question of like, what could you do, but what you wanted to do. And then when I started studying texts like Handmaid's Tale in school, learning about art history and studying female artists, female painters, and learning about the context of their work and how their work responded to the society and the politics that they lived in. And then also learning about how, you know, societal and social inequalities meant that a lot of women weren't given the opportunity to pursue careers in general, let alone careers in the arts. So there's a lot of underrepresentation for women in art history and throughout history in general. So that was when I went through the first stage, I would say, in like the most meaningful way was becoming aware that, oh, we live in a patriarchy where, you know, men hold a lot of the power and influence and women are given less access to opportunities. So yeah, that was stage one. (laughs) Then the second stage was anger. So I think the anger phase for me, it lasted quite a while. I go, you know, on and off in feelings of anger and frustration when it comes to gender inequality, social inequality. And I think 
as I've gotten older, society has changed a lot, but in ways that I think you're not as aware of as a regular person because the way that power shifts is kind of like, um, I don't want to say subtle, but... So I think what I'm trying to say here is that politics and economics, I think, used to be considered as two separate subjects when they're actually very closely intertwined, especially when we're living in a very capitalist society. So the bottom line is always going to be money and how you acquire power through money and not acquiring money through power. Does that make sense? And also the shift in power is very different now, I think, as corporations have a lot more economic and political influence than they may be used to, like the way that a lot of corporations have higher GDPs than certain countries and a lot of transnational corporations can influence domestic politics in order to create environments that allow them to exploit labor or to exploit profit at all costs, whether that's at the cost of human rights or the environment. And because power is so concentrated in this way and also like our dependence on technology and products that are created by these companies to function like I can't just throw my phone away throw my laptop away get off the internet it's difficult to know like where to direct your anger and frustration and who needs to be compelled to be making change it's just not as simple as like a boycott or a cancelling In some ways, you have more influence as an individual because of things like social media, but you also have less power because we're all beholden to tech companies and transnational corporations, if that makes sense. The anger phase is just like when you become aware of an issue and then suddenly you know it's like a layer has been lifted from in front of your eyes and you become aware of how all of these issues are manifesting around you and then you become angry and frustrated that this is the world that you're living in and that there are people that are facing an unfair amount of difficulty oppression or being disenfranchised and realizing that you might also be subject to these things as well. And then also experiencing it because everyone goes through these stages at their own pace, I think. So when I was starting to be a little more outspoken about my experiences with misogyny or with racism, there were a lot of um, other women of color around me that hadn't really gotten to that stage yet. They themselves thought that I was maybe overreacting or they couldn't relate to my point of view. And then maybe a few years later, they went through that awareness and anger and frustration phase in kind of like a retrospective way. And, you know, like I still remember the day that I learned the term white privilege and I was like, oh, that's that thing that I keep seeing that I didn't know. Like I didn't know what it was called and I didn't know how to explain it. And then I learned about white privilege and I was like, true that. It do be like that in Australia sometimes. Yeah, I think it's really interesting um, the ways that, you know, everybody's journey is different. And I think it's really important that we embrace and accept that rather than shaming people for not knowing what we know because you didn't know before either it's not fair to assume or compel people to exist on some sort of like moral high ground when it's basically impossible to do so I mean I make jokes about it but I feel like the stage that I'm at is less about trying to get outside world to reflect 
how I feel and my point of view and more about just trying to facilitate other people on their journey you know if I can see parallels between what they're going through and what I've been through just being able to be like you're doing great sweetie and when I felt this way this is the perspective that I took and it helped me to move forward it may or may not work for you so yeah I think my anger phase lasted for quite a while because it was really frustrating for me to sort of have this awareness um, growing up in the very small white suburb that I grew up in, (laughs) in Australia. If I was to speak up about, you know, like a traumatic experience that I had had, like someone being really racist to me or whatever, um, I didn't ever feel like I was really being taken seriously. So I just got like more and more angry. Like nobody around me was talking about it. And also like social media wasn't where it's at now where these issues are like constantly being discussed to the point where it can lean into really unproductive discussions and like cancel culture type stuff. The anger phase lasted a while, but I just got tired of being annoyed all the time and feeling like I had no control over my life or how I was perceived or how I was going to be treated because it was like any minute someone that I trusted and loved was going to reveal some like fucked up internalized racial bias and I was going to have to reconcile with the fact that my friends are racist or that my friends don't see me as an equal they see me differently because of my ethnicity in a way that I didn't see them any differently, you know, like in a predominantly white area as a person of color, you sort of like absorb the dominant culture just from the environment that you're around, but you forget that everyone sees you differently because you look differently, but everybody else looks the same to you. Like I don't walk around thinking about how I'm an Asian woman. I just walk around thinking about how I'm a person and then I have to be reminded that there's all these prejudices and ways that people can discriminate against me because of that. That was me when I was younger. And I also think like being first generation child of an immigrant who is very much focused on like providing stability for their child. My mom didn't understand what I was going through and we have very different personalities. So I would be like, my friends are being mean to me because I'm Chinese. And she would just be like, why do you even want friends? Terrible advice, okay? Which I've since confronted her about and she acknowledges. But at the time, like I had quite a few years of just being in my hometown and not feeling supported and not feeling heard. Like a few moments here and there, but for the most part, it was like, a very isolating experience for me in an already very isolated place. (laughs) I think the next phase was acceptance. I started to understand and also accept that bitches be problematic. Like history is filled with inequality, racism, the perpetuation of the patriarchy. That's why society now is like that why it will continue to be like that unless people challenge those oppressive structures and ideas. I just had to accept that it's not a matter of if you are or aren't racist, but maybe to what degree are you racist? And I also recognized that I had internalized a lot of racism and misogyny too, like without even realizing and without choosing to, because that is the nature of internalized racism and misogyny. You don't know that it's happening and only when you come up against certain situations do you start to build an awareness around it you know and I think that was the thing that I had to realize as well is that all the white people around me didn't know many people of color you know like their social circles were pretty much all white and the people of color that they knew probably didn't even talk about like their experience as people of color so not only did they never really have an opportunity to untangle the thoughts and biases that they had, they weren't given an opportunity to 
see it any other way because there was literally no example for them to follow. Like if you weren't actively looking for this sort of information, you just wouldn't come across it and you would have those biases confirmed in media and just like not even questioned because no one around you was talking about it. And I think, you know, collectively people are starting to realize that, I mean, maybe not um, to the degree with which would be like beneficial for majority, but there is like an awakening where people are realizing that, oh yeah, like everybody has innate value as people, regardless of what ethnicity you are, what nationality you are, what gender you are, what your sexual orientation is, whether you're able-bodied or not, like all of these things, your socioeconomic class. So it was just important for me to get to that acceptance phase because if you are constantly in the anger phase, which is where I feel like society at large is kind of at, mostly in between. I think majority is kind of in the awareness, acknowledgement and the anger phase because when I look at stuff online and the way that people talk about a lot of these social issues, it's still very much like, what the fuck, racist, is this racist? Is this misogynist? And like, oh my goodness, you must be compelled to do better because blah, blah, blah. Which I think is just like a necessary step and phase now. Like I can sort of accept that instead of getting annoyed that we're stuck there. I think I do get annoyed that we're stuck there, but I have hope that we can move into an acceptance phase where people have more nuance and understanding of these ideas so that it's not like a moral or a value judgment in terms of like whether you are or aren't racist or misogynist, like everybody is probably to like varying degrees. And it's more about what you're doing to, you know, untangle that, unlearn it and do better than it is about trying to double down and prove that you're a good person or that you're not racist and you know you have a friend of color so or like your best friend is gay shit like that it's so so anyway I think acceptance is the hardest thing because from what I can see or experience from growing up in a western culture is that there is this obsession with good and bad and like being a good person, not being a bad person and what constitutes being a good person and the assumption that everybody is good and then you kind of like um, get cut down when you do bad things. Like maybe it's related to some like Christianity Jesus shit, but I think in reality, everybody has good and bad parts of them. And that's also like a personal journey that I went through as well. Like being able to understand and accept and embrace like the contradictions within me, you know, the good and the bad and trying to do better when faced with difficult situations, trying to unlearn unhealthy thought patterns, break unhealthy patterns of behavior. And that's like an ongoing journey and it is extremely difficult, like very, very hard, but ultimately quite rewarding. I have to say like, When I look back at me 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, one year ago, 10 months ago, 10 days ago, like trying to embrace that process and really just like confront discomfort, I feel like it really helps to build a sense of self and just like stability within myself I feel much more at peace definitely a lot of chaos going on but in general like easier to manage the chaos within I would say and find healthy ways to express the chaos you know after acceptance is action so when you realize everything's a little bit fucked and you've been a little bit fucked up too from childhood trauma, societal conditioning, the media. It's like, well, what are you going to do about it? Are you just going to be angry? Are you just going to pretend you don't see it? (laughs) Or are you going to do something about it? And I think action is hard because 
when you realize how fucked up shit is, you're like, oh my God, what can I do? Like you kind of want to see if you can fix it. Everybody just let go and move on. Let's forgive and forget. But it's really not that simple. Like change is difficult and it requires consistency and it requires self-awareness. And it also requires being able to fail and being able to embrace pain, I think. And I think these are the things that are the hardest to do. People to admit that they're wrong, people to take chances and possibly fail or be wrong. And then how to, f- and then figuring out like, what did you learn from that fuck up and how can you do better? It's important to find ways to address certain issues and move through them and try to learn from the past so we can build a better future. You know what I mean? So with action, yeah, I don't think it's as simple as like, okay, now we're just going to dismantle capitalism tomorrow. I think we all have like internalized the capitalist in our brains just from the type of media we consume, the type of language that media uses now, the types of things that are valued and pedestaled in society. And it's hard to unlearn and it's also hard to accept that like sometimes you have to play the game to break the rules as well. So I think everybody's role is going to be different and you know some people's role is going to be smaller on a micro level, other people can cons- can assume positions of power and influence and you know shift narratives etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So for me in terms of action, like I really try to just continue to educate myself and expand my awareness and, you know, can like keep shaping and reshaping different ideas and understandings of how the world works and also of myself and just making sure that I'm having really like open and honest conversations with people about literally like anything because the more that I learn about psychology and human behavior, the more I understand that it's like, even though one person can seem so insignificant when you consider the collective, it's like all of these individuals come together to create a society. So as important as it is to want and work towards structural change and building new structures and communities, etc., it's also really important to unlearn and change the way that you think because I've worked with a lot of women who you know on a superficial level we're like yes let's support girls and the LGBTQ community and find a way to do something cool together but sometimes you come across people who have a lot of internalized misogyny and haven't really um learned how to collaborate and cooperate. They've been conditioned to vie for male approval over connection with women. And it's sad to see that, but I understand it because I remember feeling that way when I was younger and not enjoying that feeling at all, wondering why I had it and trying to find ways to combat it. Like it was a really important process for me to go through because you talk about wanting the same things or being on the same page, but you really need to assess the way that people behave in order to understand what their values are and where they're coming from. And unfortunately, sometimes you think like you're on the same page, but there is like an imbalance um, or inconsistency in the way that you are experiencing each other. So again, like it, expanded my awareness around how these different sorts of issues can manifest and forced me to learn like and adopt better tools and how to deal with it and how to better support people who haven't gone through what I've gone through yet or you know are still exploring sides of themselves that they are unaware of which I'm constantly doing anyway. So with these four stages, I'm like constantly oscillating between them. Sometimes I'm in two at once, you know, I'm like becoming aware of something, learning about something, and I'm trying to accept it while also being angry and then like figuring out if there's anything that I can do about it. 
maybe just having to accept that there is nothing I can do about it. Because I think a really important realization as well is that there are two parallel journeys that occur your personal journey and then like the journey of the world in which you live in and when the two things are conflated for me it was like that was when I was stuck in the anger phase because I was looking at the world around me and thinking what the fuck is wrong with everything what is wrong with me why can't I compel everything around me (laughs) to be better the way that I think it should be better and then I realized well how do you know what's best for everyone just because these problems exist and I'm aware of them doesn't mean it's my like sole responsibility to combat them I think like western individualism and capitalism and the media sort of like come together to create an environment where It's like the onus of the individual to address these huge global scale issues that they themselves like didn't necessarily willingly, knowingly contribute to, you know, because it's a lot of the time it's like people in power and government and corporations that are making decisions that don't really benefit society and just benefit them. So like, how can it be the responsibility of everyday people to fix that I mean even for like a celebrity to fix that you know like they aren't making they don't have that kind of decision making power but because they have influence this these two things are conflated and then you get these like weird echo chambers of people like trying to cancel public figures who didn't even know what they were a part of because you know they're just trying to get their coin but like there are people who are making decisions knowing that it's not going to be beneficial for humanity at large but it's going to make their bank account and their wallet really fat and juicy in a way that is like not even realistic for any one person to have that much money but they make those decisions anyway so when I was able to honor like my personal journey and to embrace that at whatever pace it occurs and to try to connect and support people on their journey as well that was much more um, fulfilling and just recognizing that there are like so many fucking people out there so many like The human mind can't even really conceptualize the number of people on planet Earth right now. Of course, like everyone's coming from different perspectives, different backgrounds, different political leanings, different socioeconomic backgrounds. Everyone's a different age as well. So you can't take personally that outer world. You can only like observe and learn from it. But it's sort of like unproductive to constantly wait for external permission to take a step forward for yourself, if you know what I mean. For me, recentering, focusing on what I can work on, what I can control and what I can contribute versus like constantly externalizing the need for validation from whatever, people I don't know, society at large, the media, who cares? Also like authenticity is just priceless you can't buy that shit it's something that you have to work on you need to figure out what your values are and figure out if your actions align with it the things that were important to me when I was 14 and the things that are important to me now are very different and being able to embrace that and not feel ashamed like I think there's so much shame in our society because people are just becoming aware of these problems they're like ashamed that they either didn't know about it before or that they may have like somehow contributed to it without even knowing and I think shame can be helpful to like compel you to do something but it's not good in really large doses because it can just overwhelm you to the point of like inaction and complacency and it can just make you bitter as well because you don't feel you're kind of like robbed of your ability to feel confident when you're overwhelmed with shame 
really get honest with yourself on how you've maybe internalized some biases. It doesn't matter like what your background is. You are a product of your environment and your experiences. When you realize that like what 95% of your subconscious is driving your actions and your and the source of your thoughts, I mean like two to five percent is conscious thought. And most people probably aren't even aware of that. So they aren't actually aware of the fact that a lot of what they think is completely not within their control, if at all, like the illusion of free will type thing. So I take everything a lot less personally now that I know that because people don't know what they're doing. Like they literally don't know what they're doing. Who's to say I know what I'm doing? I don't really feel like I do. So yeah, that's my journey so far. I hope this made sense. Um, there's so many other parts that could be spoken about in more detail. One thing I'm learning about now is like divine feminine, divine masculine energy and like yin and yang and how this doesn't have anything to do with like gender, but about like energy and different polarizing energies how they are all part of like one harmonious whole and how society is now imbalanced because we skew too far towards yang energy which is male energy and like feminist movements show the resurgence of divine feminine which is yin energy so this is like a lens through which you can sort of like understand the patterns and trajectory of society and better understand like yourself as well recognizing that within every person is divine feminine and divine masculine and you should be allowed to embrace both sides of you I think there's a long way to go for society in general and I think that sort of change requires individual expansions in awareness being able to have access to resources and tools that can help facilitate that and also connecting and communicating with each other creating judgment-free spaces to accept people for like where they're at in their journey and to support them in it you know I don't think I definitely don't know everything I don't think I'm at the end of my journey but I think I've been through a lot I've seen a lot so I have some perspective to share and I want other people to share their perspective with me too because it's important to learn where other people are coming from instead of just thinking that everyone's seeing shit the way that you are they're not their experience is different their insights are different and learning from each other is important and finding common ground to move forward together so thanks for watching thanks for listening if you have any comments please let me know you can dm me on instagram at amber killer or at friend.crush let's keep in touch clubhouse rooms we're gonna do them i think we're gonna try and see what happens and if it flops then oh well <laughs> what should we talk about next so many thoughts but like not sure what's worth sharing so let's see yeah take care of yourself drink water tell your friends and family that you love them and you appreciate them and stay safe out there I love you and I'll talk to you soon.